مولاي صلي وسلم دائما ابدا على حبيبك خير الخلق كلهم الحمد لله الحمد لله رب العالمين الصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى آله وصحبه ولبيته من اتباع سنة وجمه فعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قال الله تبارك وتعالى سورة الحجرات chapter 49 الله سبحانه وتعالى says آية نمبر 11 يا أيها الذين آمنوا لا يسخر قوم من قوم عسى أن يكون خيرا منهم ولا نساء من نساء عسى أن يكون أن يكون خيرا منهن ولا تلمزوا أنفسكم ولا تنابزوا بالألقاب بئس الاسم الفسوق بعد الإيمان ومن ومن لم يتب فأولئك هم الظالمون يا أيها الذين آمنوا آمنوا اجتنبوا كثيرا من الذن إن بعد الذن اسم ولا تجسسوا ولا يغتب بعدكم بعد أن يحب أحدكم أن يأكل لحم أخيه ميتا فكرهتموه واتقوا الله إن الله تواب رحيم يا أيها الناس إنا خلقناكم من ذكر وأنثى وجعلناكم شعوبا وقبائل لطارفوا إن أكرمكم عند الله أتقاكم إن الله عليم خبير صدق الله العظيم وصدق رسوله النبي الكريم والآقبة للمتقين ونحن على ذلك لمن الشاهدين والشاكرين والحمد لله رب العالمين uh, الحمد لله الله سبحانه وتعالى have given us this beautiful opportunity on this Sunday evening to do the zikr Allah as last time we were talking about uh, all life matters and that topic is also the situation as we know this very volatile and there's a lot more to talk about Islam has a lot of message in it and we as a Muslim also have to learn from our deficiencies and our prejudices and our discrimination so I recited these ayah from Surah Hujrat from ayah number 11 to uh, 13 in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is addressing first to the believers. So we need to correct ourselves and we need to have our own islah. And then inshallah I will try to quote all the ahadith possible and all the logic to be questioned for ourselves. It's a moment to reflect upon ourselves. In other words, somebody else is doing a mistake. We should just not jump on the bandwagon to get the credits. Basically, we need to fix ourselves. And this is the whole idea about our lecture that we should improve and do the zikr Allah and the teaching of Quran and the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa and the stories about our aslaf. We should learn how the Muslim treated each other in the time of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa By the way, this is being understood and established a fact that no prophet before Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ever spoke about these issues and no holy scripture have talked about these because all the prophets were sent to their nation and they were dealing with one nation only. But in Islam, we see Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was sent as for the entire humanity and mankind and all the creations. Alameen. So he is the only prophet who had a companion from different races and who has a nation of different distances he related in his own lifetime. And inshallah, if time permits, we'll do that. So let's move on to this. In Surah Al-Hujrat, the first ayah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, O oh, you believer, the addresses to the people of Iman, Ahlul Iman. La yasr qawman min qawmin, do not mock and insult a nation on other a nation. It's possible that they are better than you. And also the women should not mock another woman. It's possible that they are better than you or they are better than the one who is mocking them. And do not defame and taunt and do not use insulting, humiliating nickname to insult a person like, oh, you disbeliever, oh, you son of this, oh, you daughter of that, such kind of, oh, you the man of such and such nation, you know. So we should be very mindful about insulting name. We can call the person like you are a Pakistani, you are Indian, you are, this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, inshallah, I will just mention and that it is not insult to call somebody from his heritage, but it is taunting a heritage is what is forbidden in Islam, which would be insulting to a person. If you call me, uh, Ya Abdullah, or son of a, the, of, of the Abd of Allah, which is respectful. But if you call me something a derogatory or insulting name, uh, such such as you Pakis or this thing which is considered insulting in certain cultures, or you Asians and such and that, this is not 
insultingly be called to anybody. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mentioning about the nation to nation. You see, they're very important. The Islam is systematically wiped out the racism and fascism and uh, superior and inferior race. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that a nation, a qawm, dusri qawm ki izzat kam na kare. Kisi tarah se bhi unko, unke baare mein koi aisi baat na kare jo unke liye mazaak uthane wali baat ho. This is very, very important. One ayah just wiped out the whole racism and whole fascism, whole superior and inferior race or country and a nation. Second thing is about women because women often take pride in their self or their heritage. It's very importantly told to them that do not insult other women and do not call a believer when they have become a Muslim that they call them a defaming, a taunting name or any humiliating or insulting nickname for that. And it's not just another. I think almost all, all humans do that. And they are basically is the foundation laid for those in, insulting and taunting name and word lead to the superiority and inferiority complexes. And that lead to the fascism and hatred and racism. And that leads to a temptation to contempt and to hurt other persons. Because for them, it's not worthy of respect. So this is very important, the respect of a human being. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, is al-Iman." It is. Do you think it's appropriate or is the thing of respect to call a person after they have accepted the Iman and they become Muslim to call them with the name of a fisk and a disrespect? Whoever did not repent. The tawbah is important once you did such thing like that. Make a tawbah. Woman lam yate. Do the one who did not do the tawbah, they say tawbah ne kari is guna ke karne ke baad. Wo hi se zalim. And Allah to Muhammad Taala will not forgive zalim because this violation is not against Allah. It is the against the fellow human and Muslim and a person of any race and nationality. Then further, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is saying, Ya Allah din amanu chtani bo kathira min al zan. A iman walo baad. زیادہ زن بنانے سے کسی کے بارے میں ازمشن سے کسی کے بارے میں اپنی رائے قائم کرنے سے درو رکو abstain from making assumption about other inna ba'da zann ism and many of the assumption are sinful wala tajassasu and wala yaghtu ba'dukum ba'dan do not be inquisitive and intruding into somebody else's matter. Do not be having a spying on others and do not backbite. That, oh, the falan to aise hai. Wo unhone aise baat kai aur aadhi baat karke chhod deta insan. That leads to a great suspicion in the person's heart. When you talk, talk to the person, talk to the face, tell this brother that, listen, I'm a Muslim brother. I do not agree with your opinion and such and such. Let's have an open conversation. اب ایک بات میں آپ کو بتاؤں ہم آپس میں مسلمان ایک دوسرے سے اتنے اختلاف میں ہیں کہ ایک دوسرے کی شکل دے کے نفرت کر لیتے ہیں جبکہ دوسرے لوگوں کی شکل دے کر کے ہمیں اتنی نفرت نہیں آتی بکوز وی ڈو ناٹ ریسپیکٹ ایچ ادر سو مچ دی اندر تھنگ از دیٹ ڈو ناٹ بیک بائی وین یو بیک بائٹ وین یو سلینڈر بیک بائٹ اینڈ گاس دیر آر تھری تھنگس بیک بائٹنگ از ٹاکنگ اباؤٹ اے پرسن بہائنڈ از بیک گاسبنگ از میکنگ اے جسٹ Rumor is spreading around and uh, Namima, Namima is gossiping and uh, uh, what you call the, uh, the gossiping and backbiting and slander. To slandering and that is one of the very important thing that we make accusation of a person which he does not have or done wrong. So uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says for after this ayah, Would you love to eat the flesh of your dead brother? Indeed, and surely you will be a verse, a verse from that. And be conscious of Allah. Indeed, Allah is all repentful and merciful. So we should be very mindful of that. Then further Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala addressing now the conversation changed towards the mankind. Ya ayyuhun nas, oh you mankind. Inna khalaqnaakum min dhakrim wa unsa. We indeed created you from a male and a female. Wa ja'alnaakum shu'uba wa qaba'ila li ta'arafu. And we created you among shu'uba. Uba in nations and the races and the tribes so that you may know each other now very important thing to understand Shu'ab means any race like Arab race and Ajam race white race African race Asian race these are the races which are mentioned and the nations 
Uh, the country made with the tribes, and there are different tribes which are certain lineage and family heritage. So that you may know, not that you hate each other to show down each other or put down each other, just to know each other. Inna akramakum in the atqakum. Indeed, the most honorable in the sight of Allah is the one among you is who have the taqwa, which means consciousness with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Inna Allah alim and khabir. Indeed, Allah has all the knowledge and is aware of everything. Then further in Surah. Uh, room Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says wa min ayatihi khalaqus samawati wal ardi wa ikhtilafu al sinatikum wa almanikum inna fi dhalika la ayat lil alamin and indeed among the signs now see this is not a curse of a person's color is not a curse of Allah as they say it was the curse of Ham that the black race was born and made no it is the signs of Allah it is the sign of Allah that we have different color of our skin. Just imagine if everybody was the same color and same race, people would not have known the difference of beauty of the difference and distinction. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created color. So if you disrespect the sign of Allah, color is a sign of Allah of a human or any color. So we need to be respectful for that. Any color with the person has rather than insulting. All such taunting, insulting words should be carefully spoken because a spoken word will be accounted for. As Rasulullah said, control this and you will make everybody friend and you will have nobody enemy with you. And then, and your tongues, the languages, all the languages are not the curse of Allah. It is made by Allah. So all the languages, all the people, the culture and languages are made by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In this, there are signs for those of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, those who have the knowledge. So understanding this is the sign of Allah that we comprehend and we understand that. And then Surah and Khutbah Hajjat al-Wida, Nabi alayhi salatu wa salam. You see, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala already wiped out this thing. That there is no distinction between race and ethnicity and culture and, and racial background or superiority of anybody except the piety is a is criterion. So anybody who is more pious and criterion, inshallah, I will talk about some more details about this matter. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, said this in the Quran. Now Rasulullah in the khutbah hajjat al the final sermon he made, the last sermon he made in the khutbah, the farewell hajj, he said, Inna akramukum indallahi atqakum wa laysa li arabi ala al-ajami he said, indeed, the most honorable among you in the sight of Allah is the one who have taqwa. And Arab has no superiority over non-Arab. The racial uh, discrimination is wiped out in the khutbah hajjat Allah. Arab could be anybody, but he is not superior to a non-Arab except the piety. And then, you see, the, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took out the racism. Here, the language, language is one of the things that people think we speak certain language, we are superior. There is no superiority in speaking of any language. It is Allah who gave the person the honor to have such language and able to speak and relate to each other. And then further he says, Allah, la fadla li Arabi ala al Ajmi, wala al Ajmi ala al Arabi, wala li Ahmar ala al Aswad, wala li Aswad ala al Ahmar, illa bi taqwa. Subhanallah. See, he wiped out the any chance of racial, color, language, any form of superiority. And there's a very strong hadith I will read you, which I may not be even to translate exactly, but it is the saying of the Prophet. He said it, and we should know about it. So he said, there is no, no, Allah, beware, Allah is a warning. Is a threat, is a, is a challenging call. Allah, la fadla li Arabi ala al Ajmi. Arab has no, absolute, no superiority over a non Arab. Wala al Ajmi ala al Arabi. And no, non Arab have superiority of uh, over Arab. Wala li Ahmar ala al Aswad. The brown or red skin over the black skin. And the black skin over the red skin. Illa bi taqwa. This is a hadith from Muslim Ahmad. So this totally wiped out any chance of inheritance or race superiority of anybody who thinks that he or she is better because of their personality or looks or their appearance which should know now this hadith is from Muslim hadith number 7163 Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam said when this matter brought to him 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, khalaq Allahu azza wa jal adama ala suratihi tawluhu sittuna zara'an, falamma khalaqahu qala izhab, fasallim ala al-ulaika nafrahum, wa hum wa nafrum min malaikatu jilusun, fastamih ma yajibunaka, yajibunaka fa innaha tahiyyatuka wa tahiyyatu zurriyatika, qala fazhab, faqala assalamu alaykum, faqala assalamu alayka wa rahmatullahi, qala fazarahu, fazarahu, زراده ورحمة الله قال فكل من يدخل الجنة على سورة آدم وطوله ستون زرعا فلم يزل الخلق ينقص بعده حتى لعن In this hadith it says the Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam said Allah the exalted and glorious created Adam in his own image with his length of 60 cubits cubits means arms length and as he created him, he told him to greet that group. And that was a party of angels sitting there and listened to the response that they gave him. For it would from his greeting and that is of his offspring. So the angel gave the greeting and Adam al Islam gave greeting to the angels and they responded to every Muslim and every human for to be born among his offspring. He then went away and said, peace be upon you. So he went to Adam uh, to angel and said, Salaamu Alaikum. The angel said, there may be peace upon you and the mercy of Allah. And they made an addition to the mercy of Allah. So he would, he who would get into paradise would get in the form of Adam al Islam, his land being 60 cubits in then the people who followed him his, him continued to diminish in size up to this day so the original uh, man was more than that size now there is one question we should ask as a muslim we believe in the soul and the spirituality and existence of men so is there a color of a roof is there a nation of a roof is there a tribe of a roof is there a heritage of a roof in siwai that except that we all came from the adam alayhi salam this is the covenant we all took when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took out the, the progeny of Adam, the root of the, all the souls of Adam's children to be coming from the flank and took the covenant from them. This is the Misak, Misak which we took, which the first covenant we made with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now this hadith which I'm going to read you is a very strong hadith. It is from Mishkat al-Masavi in volume 2, hadith number 1021. I cannot translate it completely, but I'll translate you at that. The Prophet sallallahu said, on the authority of Ubay bin Ka'ab, if any one of you proudly assert his descendant in the manner of pre-Islamic people, tell him to go and bite his father's pride and do not use as euphemism. This is such a strong word. Prophet never used such vulgar language, but he exactly used these words. It is the hadith of Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam. That somebody who thinks he is better because this is no superiority of anybody that I am, a, whatever I am, except that Allah made me what I am. But if he thinks that his father was a reason, then go and bite it. This is very strong word. You may never have heard this hadith. And this is something as Islam totally negates. Prophet ﷺ harshly treated those people who ever treated people with the personal heritage and name and fame and glory. And there was a time when, uh, when uh, Abu Sufyan, when, ha when he became Muslim and he one came to visit Umar anhu, and he made him wait for a long time. And then, and then after one time, uh, quite one hour, some time has passed when uh, Umar radiallahu anhu, he was Amir al mumineen he came out with Bilal radiallahu anhu and greeted him off and shaking and respectfully saying, seeing him off. So Abu Sufyan still had him as himself as a tribal chief and he has arrogance of him. And he said to Umar, for this man, you kept me waiting for this long? Umar radiallahu anhu said, Abu Sufyan, you still have the effect of jahiliya in you, have you not learned? And this is my leader. He said, uh, Bilal ibn Rabia radiallahu Oh, no, is my sardar, is my chief. Had he, I known you, it was you who was waiting and you had so much hatred towards him, I would have kept you wait for longer. So this is how some people, even though they accept Islam, still did not absorb the Islamic uh, humility and humbleness. And another hadith, which is narrated, uh, that the Messenger of Allah said, Allah has taken away your pride of jahiliya and 
you are boasting for about four fathers. One is only a righteous believer or doomed evil doer. You are the son of Adam and Adam was created from dust. Men should stop boasting about their forefathers who are no more than the coal of hell or they will certainly be more insignificant before Allah than the beetle that rolls down with its nose. Can we understand that? How much he belittled them? The prophet saying that these people in the day of judgment who died on Jahiliya, those who are kuffar, your forefathers you are proud and arrogant about, they are no more than the value of the dung, the filth, which a beetle move it with, the, with its nose. So they are worth less than that dung, which is really worthless thing. So Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam brought this family superiority and boasting and heritage and called this name. Then another time, once a man visited the Prophet sallallahu masjid the Nabawi, and he saw the group of people, including Salman al-Farsi radiallahu anhu, Suhaib al-Rumi radiallahu anhu, and Bilal bin Rabia Abyssinian radiallahu anhu. And the man said, if the Medinian tribes of Aus and Khidr support Muhammad, they are his people. But what are those people doing here? Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam, when he heard this, he became very upset and they, read, they write the word, he became angry. I don't write about the angry. He became very in the jalal. I write for the jalal of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasalam. We should use the word jalal, not the anger. Anger is from shaitan and Rasulullah does not get shaitan on him. So he came in jalal and when, when he was reported to him, he went to the masjid the Nabawi and summoned people to the prayer where he addressed to them and saying, oh people, know that the Lord and sustainer is one your ancestor is one your faith is one the Arabism of anyone of you is not from your mother or father it is no more than a tongue a language whoever speak Arabic is an Arab now you see today a scholar have an ijma what is the definition of Arab Arab is the person who is speak the Arabic language is the Arab. He is no more because uh, we may not know because we don't have much knowledge of the history. They were black Arabs. They were brown Arabs. They were white Arabs. They were all type of thing. As you see, the northern, the Syrian, the Palestinian, the Jordanians are lighter skin. As you go towards the south of it, even to the Yemen, there are darker complexion. And among the tribe, like Abu Zar Ghaffari himself was a black Arab Sahabi. And he insulted Bilal radiallahu ta'ala anhu, who was also African black uh, Arab. But he was from Abyssinia originally. His mother was from that. He called him. He said, Ya Ibn Aswada. I mean, it was an insult. Ibn Radiyatala had become very, uh, very much hurt with this comment. You know, so he went and com complained to Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam called Abu Zar Ghaffari Radiyallahu Anhu, who is a very Jalil Qadr Sahabi. He said, Abu Zar, is still the Jahiliyas in, your, in you that you call my companion. He loved Bilal so much. He said, you call him with the name of his mother's heritage and the color of the skin? Even though Abu Zar himself was a black, but he was a black Arab compared to Bilal who was a black African. So this is the difference we should know that sometimes we see all shades and color. And we also should know while we are talking on this topic that the Asia is the biggest continent on the earth. It starts from the border of Egypt all the way towards the Russia in the north and all the way towards the center uh, Turkey and Middle East and all the way to the Afghanistan and Pakistan and India and then to the China and to the south to the Bangladesh and Sri Lanka and, and Burma and Bhutan and going further down to Indonesia and Malaysia and Burma and all the way to China to Korea. This is such a massive, massive continent. All these are Asian and you see them, they have different features, they have different colors, they have different language, they have different food, but they are all counted as Asian people. And this is how vast it is. And among them there are all colors and all shades and all sizes and all cultures, likes and dislikes and faith and all that. So all humanity is part of one thing. So we have to respect each other from that dignity of a person being children of Adam and the Ruh of Adam alayhi salam where Allah says Nafaq fi Ruh Allah breathe that Ruh into the Adam so we all have a, this honor of us to be in that connection so then there is a hadith Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam teaches whoever has arrogance in his heart equal to an atom weight shall not enter the paradise a man inquired about the person who liked to wear beautiful clothes and fine shoes he said God is beautiful and love you too Allahu Jameel Yuhibbu 
Ibnul Jamal. This is the hadith of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And explained pride as rejecting the truth because of the self-esteem and, and looking down on other people. Hadith number 65 from Muslim. That one should dress good, look better, but should not look down upon other. That is not what is acceptable and promoted by Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So then... A Sahabi came to Rasulullah Sallallahu Very interesting in Bukhari Hadith number 5305. So a, uh, a black man came to uh, a man came to Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi and said, "A black child has been born from me for me." The Prophet asked him, "Have you got camels?" The man said, "Yes." The Prophet say, asked him, "What color are they?" The man replied, "Red." The Prophet says, "Is there any gray or any anyone among them?" He replied, "Yes." The Prophet says, "Hence comes that. Where comes that?" He said, maybe it is because of the hereditary. The Prophet ﷺ said, maybe your latest son has the color because of the heredity. So a person may have a lighter skin and a darker skin child. And we know in Asia, we have a lot of our children and brothers and sisters who have a lighter color and darker color. And we should know this more than anybody that how much shade of colors we have in Asia. And this is what something that... Probably the Sahabi was suspecting his wife that she might have gotten this child from somebody. Otherwise, whatever reason. But we should see that this happened in our families, our children, mostly Asian. We see a lighter skinned child and a light, darker skinned child. And we love them all equally. So this is what we should be loving and respectful. Another hadith number 4762 in which uh, Nabi alayhi salatu said, this is the Sahabi narrated that he was in the Hajjat al of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he was listening a lot of things Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said. Then he said that one thing, ya, uh, Yahya bin Hussein, this is the Sahabi who is narrating. I maimed, uh, uh, if uh, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, I heard him, if a maimed slave is appointed a commander over you, the narrator says, I think he said black slave who leads you according to the book of Allah, then listen to him and obey him. So now, if a deformed person, a body of a person means his ears are missing because of whatever injury or whatnot happened, his face may be deformed, his hand might be amputated for reason or injury or war or whatnot, at, as long as that person is a slave person leading to you under the guide of Quran and Sunnah, obey him. If you have made him your leader, obey your leader. And another hadith from Tirmidhi, hadith number 2955, as Nabi alayhi salatu said, that indeed Allah most high created Adam from a handful from that he took from all the earth. So the children of Adam come in according to the earth, some of them come red, and white and black and between that and thin and thick and filthy and the clean. Now you see Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam described all the physical attributes of a person just because Allah made the children of Adam from different colors because we all come from dust. As we should also know that we are product of a star dust. You know star dust? It is the, now the scientists are saying we have come from a star dust. You know why? All the stars split out and that came from the different level of 13.5 billion which is known and the planet came in existence from those planet Allah says we create you from clay so the theory of creativity has Islamic concept to it and this is how we should understand it that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he made Adam alayhi salam he took dirt from all different shades as we know that the earth planet earth has sometimes if you go to beach you see white sandy beach some are dark colored some are brown colored, some are ruddy redded, and some are brown light. So we know that all kind of shades and colors are found on the planet Earth. And we should be respectful for each other for they, what they are, the content of the person rather than the race of the person.